It uh, doesn't, however, solve the problem of the magnification, uh, but which we'll get to in a minute here. Um, but let's look at how a one lens, three lens, and five lens system would behave. And I'm not basically going to draw those because that's too much effort. But a one lens system essentially behaves as a one over S. So you're going to get a curve like this. Uh, it has one inflection point. Um, another way to draw it would be like this, where you have a point where the rays become parallel and the image distance goes to infinity. Um, would be another way to look at a one's lens system. When we go to a three lens system, we come up with a second order polynomial. And here are some examples of what the image distance as a function of lens position might look like for a three lens system. Uh, they look like curves from second order polynomials. If we go to a five lens system, that might be a fourth order polynomial, you might get something that looks like this right here. And in fact, uh, uh, what we find is that uh, you do get systems like this as you move to more and more lenses, and you get more and more inflection points in your curves as you get more and more lenses. One thing I want to point out here is if this, in fact, is the position of the last lens, it's possible here to get virtual images uh, for, Im for such imaging systems. And you know it's a, a virtual image if this is the position of the last lens and your image point you calculate happens to be inside on this side of your last lens, you're getting a virtual image and you certainly can't use it for any kind of real camera system like you want to build a zoom lens for. Um, now on to the problem of magnification. This is really straightforward. We know the uh, transverse magnification is just the image distance divided or the image height divided by the object height. And that turns out to be that the transverse magnification is simply the magnification of lens one times the magnification of lens two times the magnification of lens three. Uh, and so on and so forth, however many lenses you have in your system. And this is very easy to calculate because you just calculate your magnification to be minus S image over S object for each of those. And that's a fairly straightforward calculation to do. And now that we're able to calculate uh, using real numbers an actual image position for an in-lens optical system and calculate the magnification of that, now we can start to define what a zoom lens is. So let's take a look at that for a couple of cases here. Uh, here on this graph I just popped up, the dashed line represents the magnification, and the solid line represents the image plane position following the third lens. And as we've said, with a positive lens, a negative lens, and a positive lens, this in fact forms a zoom lens. And this is what this might look like. So let's take a look at this. Um, what I want to bring your attention to is this region right in here. As a function of the lens spacing, D12, you'll notice there's a region here that for some position of this lens spacing right in here, there is no change of the image position. The image position stays essentially constant. So no matter how you move this lens, if your image doesn't shift, it's still focused on the film and it doesn't get blurry. It doesn't go out of focus. Over this region, you'll notice, in fact, there's a change in magnification. The magnification goes from this value to this value. So what this curve is telling you is that the image is staying in focus as you adjust this lens spacing. But the size of the image given by the magnification is changing. And so with a set of curves that look like this, there is a region where this thing, in fact, behaves as a zoom lens because the image position is not changing and the magnification is. Let's look at another set of curves for a three lens system. Uh, here we have our image position constantly changing and our magnification also changing. This is not a zoom lens because there's no point where as you change the lens spacing here, the image position remains constant. So if I came up with a set of curves, I would say this, does, this optical system does not form a zoom lens. Uh, let's take a look at a somewhat more complicated case as we might find with a five lens system. Uh, here we've got a very large region where the image position is relatively constant. Um, however, for most of this region, the magnification is also relatively constant, and this does not form a good zoom lens. However, in this region, right in here, we have a fairly large change of the magnification from this value down to this value, while our image position is not shifting much. And so this is also a good zoom lens, 
but not just because the image position is constant, because the magnification changes when the image position is also constant. So what we've done today to recap all of this is that we are able to write fairly simple polynomial equations for an inland system. Uh, we can solve these polynomial equations, hopefully not long way algebra by hand, but using the computer to iteratively solve the equations. The polynomial equation gives us curves. A curve of the image position is a function of how you move lenses around. And you can certainly move these lenses around in nearly any combination, so there are a lot of possible families of curves. It also lets us calculate the magnification by simply multiplying the magnification at each stage. And if we find, when we plot the magnification and the image position at the output of the system, that there is a point where the magnification changes and the image position remains relatively constant, we have at that point designed a zoom lens. And so you can see their simple mathematical model and looking at some curves tells us a lot about optical systems and gives us a way to analyze systems to determine if this idea of zoom, in fact, can be, be implemented.